Thank you for being here. Um, I really appreciate it. I'll see this fool. Um, and it's not going to be that good. So. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I'm going to need to get what's on it. Um, thank you for also to the organizer, the p side stuff. Um, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is I, I told you it's not going to be that good. It's racism, sexism, xenophobia. If you're one of those people, please, next time don't come. <laughs> Just stay at home. Just play video games. Another thing, so yeah, infosec in that industry doesn't play one. Another thing, um, this is a tweet that I saw a while while I was writing this slide. So as a white bearded, okay, it says as a white bearded, let me just read it. So. To be in InfoSec, if you start out, you don't have to be white. So you saw today we have two black tops. So we can be everyone can be in InfoSec. You don't have have to have beard. You said this? Beard, specific. Beard. You said this. <laughs> neck, what? <laughs> neck, yes. You don't have to have this. You don't have to wear a black t-shirt, you can even wear a pink one. Good. You don't have to be male. You can be any female or whatever. So if you are a female, don't don't try to, to impress too much, just be yourself. You're good. We need you. Metal fed, I don't even know what metal fed is. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, you, know, you don't need to be employed. So, uh, you can do your fuck one cheese at home and stuff like that. So, cool. So, the name of the talk is I Attack Simulation and anti it. So, I removed threat because I think Americans use threat. I like Attack because it kind of speaks to me somehow. I don't know. About me, uh, my name is Nati. Um, that's my Twitter handle. I'm African, I'm black, I'm cancer, I'm a son, I'm a father, I'm a hacker, I'm a noob. I'm vegan. I've been vegan for one and a half years now. I do a lot of alcohol. I'm not French. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not French, so apparently I'm not French uh, or something. I do start in English, so if I don't forget, I don't remember something, I'm just going to say it in Tuana or Zulu, so you figure it out. <laughs> I'm also a God-fearing guy, but I'm not a saint. I do not have a tattoo. You don't need a tattoo to be for tattoo. Um, I'm also a biker. I have a book. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, I'm a red team at Sanlam. I used to work for Sun's Post. Um, before um, I joined Sanlam, I didn't know what a red team is. So I, I was talking to my ex colleague George. I was like, what the heck is red team? What are we going to do? It's like, nah, just a uh, fantastic stuff you do. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's what I do. So why, how, how it all started? So getting a new job, um, it meant that I'm gonna have time, now, more time, to do some research and do some uh, cool hacks and stuff like that. But it wasn't fun anymore. So because now I'm working for a sort of a huge um, organization, I get to get, I get to receive those pen test reports. So the same report that I was giving before, now I could receive them, now it's my baby. And now I get to have my <coughs> dad, they you know other people say, so, hey, this is a pen test report, you suck. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to accept this <laughs> weekend. Um, and I was, it, it's not nice, so I wanted to do something about it, so I wanted to help the defenders, you know, to kind of detect this stuff and kind of to protect myself. Um, also, on a related note, um, four years ago when I said, uh, when I started at SensePost, I asked my previous boss, Shah, to buy me this book. I still have the book. Uh, so I knew I had some defensive planning. So I always, I was always a defender somehow. Um, so I started watching this talk. Uh, this is actually a talk that made it made it easy for me to start this kind of digest stuff by Chris Gates and Chris Nickerson. It was cool. Um, I think you guys, like, if you want to hear this stuff, you should start by watching this talk. So why did I do this talk? Um, I really want to share my experience, um, my learnings. In the, hopefully it will help you get started somehow. <clears throat> I'm not an expert at all. So this is just stuff that I, that I learned. So it's probably basic stuff. Um, so if you think, if you have any comments or ideas, um, let me know. If I suck, let me know. I said, did you suck? Stop that. It's not 
<laughs> um, Pyramid of Pain. So David Bianco is um, one of the experts in threat hunting. Came up with this <coughs> Pyramid of Pain thing. Essentially, what he's saying is that organizations normally focus on the on the on this. You need to focus on this this step in order to to judge yourself. So if you focus, so essentially, if you go up, you make an attacker life, attacker life harder. So you make it harder for an attacker to kind of always uh, compromise. So we know most people um, detect on the lower levels, the, the hash values. We've got, we've got a specific hash for the file. We just upload that so that we can detect it in the future. Or you've got an IP address, you just go to abuse IP, you take those lists and say, hey, this is a bad IP, I'm just going to block that IP. Or if you've got a domain, domain name, so you go, hey, there's a bad domain name, I'm just going to block on that. And mostly, you, they just focus on that. But what we want to do with um, threat simulation and hunting, we want to focus on the top three. <coughs> so, we want to focus on... <laughs> <laughs> come on in, come on in. So, we want to focus on those top three, the artifacts. So we want to we want to take a tool and say okay who cool, this tool leave this artifact so now we want to detect on the artifact and all TTPs te tactics technical <coughs> procedures we want to say okay cool this is this is how an attack happens so we want to detect on, on the entire attack so we, it, essentially uh, detecting on different <coughs> stages of an attack so now the more you go with with this the more you make your um, an attacker life harder. Because now attacker needs to change the tools, and changing the tools is very hard. They need to change their procedures and stuff like that, their techniques every time, which which is very hard for an attack. Cool. What is attack simulation? Um, uh, Chris Nickerson on the talk on that talk that I talked about, he says just like a pilot's simulator, it is there to put you in the worst possible situation at the lowest level of risk. If you have watched. Um, uh, investigation or crash investigation, you know, when they try to figure out how the how the crash happened, they do the simulator thing, try to you know, piece things together. So this is why it is. And and so obviously I wanted to have a a code. So this is my code, which obviously points up. So for me, I said, and it's, the simulation is understanding attacks that might be used used against an organization in order to improve, to improve the organization's effect. So the idea here is that with these attacks that you're understanding that you're doing, the idea is just to improve the defense. That's, that's, that's the, the, the easy way to put it. And then so Lekki says, simulation should be done to learn how attacks are likely to achieve goals against the organization. So when, when you do attack simulation, you ask yourself uh, uh, this question. Can we detect or stop a particular attack? So you, you can sit somewhere with your buddies or and say, can we detect this attack? If the answer is yes, okay, cool, let's simulate that. Let's see if you can detect this attack. If the answer is no, okay, cool, let's simulate that and see if really we cannot detect this attack. Because the idea is just to improve defense. And also, we assume compromise. So we assume that we can be compromised, no matter how. Like any company can be compromised. And pretty much is So we always know that we can. Attack hunting is simple, it's proactive incident response. So the idea is that it, the idea is that instead of just waiting for an alert and stuff, or for somebody to call you and say, hey, um, you have leaked data or you have something, you just go and see if you you know you don't have an attack happening in your own garage. And the question you ask yourself is that are we hacked by this particular attack? So you go, you kind of think about an attack and say, are we hacked by this particular attack? If the answer is yes or no, you still go and see if you to put to to have evidence. Of, are we at Let me go and, and, and look for this attack, for that attack. Also, we assume compromise mostly. We we assume that okay, we might be compromised. So either way, let's go let's go hunt. High level process of this thing are called attack oriented defense. This is not my I didn't come up with this name. I, I just thought about it and googled it and also a couple of. So this is the process I take, or you you take. Um, firstly, you wanna choose a technique you're interested in. Um, once you're done with that, you wanna check your defensive contours. You wanna see how you're doing. 
Um, on the defensive side, if you have any controls with that, then you want to simulate an attack. Once you're done with the simulation, now you want to see if you're not being attacked already, then you want to measure how you're doing over time. Attack techniques. So, to choose your, your technique that you want to focus on, you can basically uh, check the internet if there's a, an attack, like a fire eye, um, like fire eye spot and attack in the wild, and they always say, hey, there's an attack going on in the wild, so you can kind of do research on that and pick that, uh, that technique and see if your company is not, is not vulnerable to that um, attack technique. Same thing with threat reports, if they are, I don't know who you, People mm -hmm. release stress reports yearly or monthly or whatever. We can go and take that stress report and see what techniques have been used and apply it into your, into your organization. Um, technique found during your vulnerability research. So if you are Kenny, um, if you find a vulnerability, you can see if you don't have a particular um, software in your, in your environment and try to see if you're not vulnerable to that. Uh, or, or, or also you can Check your vendor security bulletins, see if the software you use is not, it's not vulnerable to any security issue. If it is, then you take that technique, apply it to your organization, and see if, not, if you're not vulnerable. You can pick an, a hacker tool. So, if you, you know, we all know about Mimikets. So, you can take Mimikets, apply it to your environment, see if you can dump your text credentials from the host. Or you can take pen testing report, take that technique they use to get the DA in the environment and apply that and see if you can redo the, the, the entire technique and the idea is to detect it. MITRE, so MITRE is a very cool organization, so they created this um, the attack framework. Essentially they took all the, all the techniques that, that, that is being used um, and sort of collected them together for you just to go and pick a technique and go stimulate in your power. So it's pretty cool. Um, they have techniques for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, so I think it's very quick, uh, uh, cool, cool stuff. So you want to go have a look at it. One. I'm Jack. Jack is a Jack is a sort of a threat hunting expert. So basically, he said if you can develop detection for even half of what is lighter, you'll be able to to detect attacks that are happening. Right so very cool, good idea. Media and CISO. So we all know if if something happens, um, your CISO will come down to you. Hey, there's DDE, there's Mimikets. Are we affected by that? So you have to say yes, but you have to prove that yes, we, we are. The, we can detect that. <coughs> so you can pick a technique. If your CISO can come to you and say, okay, then take that technique, apply it to your government, and see the you see. Then you can show your CISO that we are good. We can detect this this. Um, Attack technique. So also you can get technique from tools, as we said. So the guys from Spectre Ops, so they created a talk earlier this year, um, and they show you how exactly you can you can get um, you can you can get techniques from a tool. So they use Mimikatz as, as an example. So it shows you how it what it does. So the credential access. So you can dump credentials, um, manipulate accounts, and sec use a, as a security support provider. And it can also be used as a lateral movement to go into other boxes. Then, once you, you have those techniques, you can pick the one you want to focus on and use that for your simulation and hunting. So, the pool, I want to simulate past the ticket or past the hash. So, you pick that one, do your simulation, see if you can detect the stuff, then move to the other one. A very cool, um, cool talk. Okay, so the first phase is done. So, we identify the technique we want to focus on. So we get, we know what we want to focus on. Now we want to do defense controls. We want to see how we're doing on the defense side. So um, Martin Lockheed Martin, the company created Lockheed, Lockheed Martin. This is Lockheed, Lockheed Martin. Martin. Yeah. So created the cyber kill chain. So essentially, what they did, they took. So they show you the, the steps that an attacker will take in order to compromise your your, your organization. And with this, with this step, as a defender, you only need to be able to detect once. Because an attack to be successful, <coughs> all those steps need to be to be a success. So you, you need to just interrupt one of those steps, then you can be able to, to kind of defend yourself and stop, stop the attack. Um, so this is on your left will be your attack, attack chains. 
set a skill chain. And what you want to end up having is something like this. So you want to have um, a tool or something to detect or deny or just up can I see the container tag. So on all those stages, you, at, at one point you want to have you want to detect something on those stages. So if you can have different different stuff on, like even if you can detect at installation or command and control, you're good because you still your data still in your environment. It doesn't been uh, shipped off to China or something. So you want to detect at one point eventually. Cool. So phase two is done. So we understand now our current defenses. So if we have a technique that we want to <coughs> focus on, so we mapped it to the to the cyber code chain, and we know that we, we can detect somewhere. So we kind of figure out where we can detect. So we want to simulate. We want to say, okay, cool. We have a technique. We know how we do it. Let's see if we can if 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 we, we let, let's simulate this technique. So this is the process that you want to take. Um, Hack yourself first. So basically, a simulation, as we know, it's not like just a pen test, like a um, hack and go. So what do you want to do? You want to test your detection tools. We have a, uh, you have a, you have a technique, and you know that uh, your defense can talk. So you want to um, simulate that uh, your tools, that if that the defending tools can detect your de that technique you want to use. So you want to test the tool. So you want to uh, run mimickers and see if that if it will be detected. And how you do that, you want to use like the same the, uh, identical machine as the, the same test machine. Identical to environment. So you want to have the latest um, your security tool installed on that. So you want to have this very same machine so that you can kind of, that we can simulate better, I would say that. And the idea with testing the, testing the tools is that you want to collect indicators of compromise. Because the idea is, as we said, simulation is about improving the defense. You want to collect those indicators so that you can eventually, later on, sort of update your, your security software. Um, what do you want to collect? The artifacts? You want to collect your network artifacts. So when you do simulation, if you have to, if there's a network connection going on, so you want to get those artifacts collected, your network artifacts, your user agent string, which is um, whatever, like Firefox goes out, so you have the, you need that you have your dynamic DNS visits. So sometimes you use your dynamic, most of the time I try to use your um, dynamic DNS to, to, to exfiltrate data, or to use it as a tunnel, encrypted um, traffic and run tap down. Also, on your host artifacts, you wanna, you wanna create new, you wanna, you wanna collect new files that are services, registry, and most importantly, files that runs on repo. So if you do hunting, so if you if you if you're an attacker, you wanna survive a reboot. So normally that's how you, you, you can persist. You wanna survive a reboot. So normally you just um, you, you wanna look for files that runs on reboot and collect on those ones. Um, atomic red team. So the guys at Red Canary created this atomic red team. Um, so basically this is a test that you can run that I map, that maps back to 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 the MITRE framework we talked about. So they made it very nice and clear, so you can just copy and paste um, stuff from, from this into your test, test laptop and collect on those ones. So it's going to collect, the, collect the, the logs and stuff. The idea also, we want to improve our defense. We want to collect those evidence and improve our, and detect on those ones. So cool, now we wanna, uh, we're done with testing our, our tools. Now we want to test the processes. Um, so you want to test how your your defenders will respond to to, to attack. So you want to send that phishing mail and see what how how your defenders guys will react to that. So you want to see how they are they following the right procedures. Are you following? Are they like are they doing the right things that they, they want to do? Are there any gaps in the process that you take? The idea also is to improve their gaps, to improve their processes, is to improve that. Um, that procedure. So here you just you just just checking your defenders guys if they're doing the real jobs. If they're sleepy, then you just have to move in there. Um, once you've done your attack, you wanna basically show them show them how you did your attack. So you wanna show the the, the blue team gun. So you don't wanna be that guy, that guy who say, hey, I had you. I'm the I'm the lead guy, I'm the hacker. No. So you wanna go to them and say, hey guys, this is how I did the attack. 
this is how you can this is um, how you can detect it. So you're gonna take that a tab you did, map it to your to your contours. We'll talk about it later. There's a the cyber chain and say, oh, this is how the attack looks. Um, this is how you can um, detect it. Also, the most important thing is logs. So the idea is that you want to have logs. So everyone should have logs. So if if you don't have logs, basically you can't detect anything. So you want to see if on on the, the attack that you created, like you, you have logs for everything. Because um, basically, if you if you don't have logs, you don't really have. And lastly, because now you collected the artifacts, the indicators of components, so you want to hand over the, to the blue team guys so that they can update whatever security tool they, they, they have. This is an example of mapping uh, your attacks to a kill chain. So this is the playbook I took from Dimester, so there's a link over there, so you can go read it, read it up. So this is a phishing, phishing attack, so you want to basically, so I'm going to go through it quickly. So the first step an attacker did was crafted an um, unpaid invoice email with the URL in it and sent the message to several users at the organization. So, okay, cool, this is the first step. So what do you have? What, so as, a, as, a, as you and a defender, so you, you, you talk, you know, what do we have? So then you no control of you, so you can't even control that. You, can't, you don't have a control over an attack sent an email to, to your organization. Cool, we accept that. Um, the second page is the phishing email is received by the company's SMTP server. Cool. So, what do we do about that? What's, what controls can we put in place? So you can reject email based on subject lines and IP, content, or other attributes. Like so, um, third phase, email goes to the company's simple spam filter. Cool, what do we do about that? We can flag bad emails to teach the spam filter. <coughs> like the fish move to the end user's mailbox. What do we do with that? Royal Ac Ac whatever IT is probably a software that's capable of removing emails and removing the inbox. Okay, cool. So we have a, a, control, a, a control for that. Step five, user notifies the new email in the mailbox, the user open and reads it. What can we do about that? We can warn your users of the imaging phishing campaign. So, so basically all the steps you have your, your control in it. User clicks on the link in a malicious email and knows it in the web browser. That good. Uh, the user's computer prints the DNS and the HTTP goes through the web browser. So there's a DNS involved. What do we do with that? Black hole DS, DNS request and block a URL on the on the proxy. Basically just taking that DNS name, the DNS, the domain name, and just giving it the internal IP, an IP that doesn't go to outside to the attack, but just is off back to your organization. So nothing goes out of your organization. So you can see simple stuff after you've done your attack, you sit with the, the defender and say, okay, cool, this is steps that I took. Um, this is the controls that we think are good for now. Then Kind of having a good conversation with your defender about so you can go ahead and implement those in your server picture. So now it's not about, hey, I can hack you, blah, blah, blah. It's about, like, oh, I have this, I know I'm good, I'm neat, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm trying to, the idea is to improve defense. It's not about, about game. So once you've done that, you get set with the, with the defender guys, so you wanna, because you don't wanna do um, this simulation every time for one thing, you wanna automatically detect the stuff. So you want to update your, your software, so your security software, your firewall, your IDS, IPS, your AV, your media. So you want to update the stuff so that the next time the thing gets picked up, get detected automatically. If there was an issue with the process that was happening, like the, the, the new team that didn't, didn't follow the process or there was a gap in the process, then you want to update those well. If there was no control at all for some, for some reason, uh, now you have to Deploy the control, you have to kind of figure out how to. If there were, let's say, for example, if there was no AV on a bot, that, that means, well, now you have to get the AV or something. And the issue with um, controls, especially for big companies, is that most people just go and buy something from someone, from a vendor or whatever. This guy, smart guy, Harun, says essentially defense shouldn't be like spending a lot of money, it should be like should be a service of X2, so it should be something that we can, if you can, in your company, just like some quick software that can detect that particular attack or bunch of attacks. So it shouldn't, shouldn't be expensive and complex. Cool, now that you deployed your controls and you, you updated your software, security software, and the defender guys are happy, yeah, now we can detect. <coughs> like, cool, but let's see if you really can detect. So now you want to validate whatever controls that just created. We're about the new defense controls. Um, 
how many how many who, how many people here uh, essentially validate their stuff? How many people here knows that knows what what, what is going on with your AV? Is the AV picking something up? Like how many people have essentially went and downloaded uh, Noisha software and said, "I want to see if AV, AV works." Probably, yeah, yeah. So you want to validate your stuff. Don't want to just sit and um, say, "Hey, I'm secure," but you know. So you want to validate your defense control, um, and most you want to create a script so that it runs like probably on a weekly, on a weekly stuff. And yeah, and you shouldn't like you don't need to be like a super <coughs> uh, software developer to do this stuff. You can just write a bad, bad file with commands that normally a hacker will run. So normally a hacker will run these commands like, to get to get information from your um, from your domain. So you can just create a script and say, "Hey, blue team, this is the script." That, you, that will run every time. So if this if you don't get if you don't if you don't detect this stuff like when it runs, then something broke or something is wrong. So you wanna run this script like, every time. So so the last part of your simulation is to track your activity. So we all know man management or whatever business would like to track stuff while right? you just don't want it. So you can create this so create this spreadsheet. Um, Basically, you can on your left you can you can have a tool that you simulated on, um, a technique that you used, and a technique that you used, and a procedure that you used. Then you'll have the results like the detection and prevention. Did you detect the attack? So you see no detection or prevention. Okay, cool. The payload was detected, which is lacquer, one bad. Payload was prevented, more lacquer, and payload. Did I just say lacquer? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> Payload detail implemented. So you wanna have those. Also, you wanna you wanna um, you wanna see how, how the gaps logging gaps. So you wanna see if the were not um, so the were not for the attack. So you wanna go and see exactly the logs for your attack. So because we said no logs, no logs, no, no cry. No logs, no cry. So no logs, no cry. So you wanna see if you you, you had the logs. Um, and logs available. And also you wanna see if um, you mean sometimes you ah, no log to detect to detect the attack, logs available to detect the attack, if I can log in, it log the system. So you basically want to have logs for every step of your attack. So you wanna you wanna type on level. Cool. So um, so we're done with that simulation phase. So we tested <coughs> we tested the technique that we, 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 we talked about, we updated our defense and we validated the control. And if there was an issue, we also updated incident procedures. If there was an issue, we should Procedures, and the good part is we know which data set to use for our hunt. We know which logs of our tech created, right? Which is going to be helpful when you do your hunting. So now you want to do your hunting. So you've done your simulation. You want to. You said, okay, cool. We we can detect this attack, or we cannot detect this attack, right? But now we updated our 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 software, our sort of security software. So we. We're pretty sure that the, the, the next attacks we will detect those. We will for sure. But now we want to see if we are, we are not already hacked. So we, we go hunting for those, for the same technique. The first step will be to collect your logs. Um, if on your attack you had, you saw there was an HTTP, um, HTTP request going out, so you want to take your proxy logs. So basically, you want to so you map your attacks to, to whatever logs you're going to need. So you can use your antivirus log, application logs, sysmon logs. So when you do your simulation, you're gonna probably need sysmon. Sysmon is a system monitoring tool, and it's very um, it's free from Microsoft. It's pretty cool. And when you do your networking simulation, you wanna use all IDS. It logs every everything from. <coughs> so essentially, you can log everything from your from your test machine. So you can, and it, it, it maps them. It creates like different um, folders. Like your HTTP, your SMB, and all that, and the logs will be in a different folder, so you can kind of look for stuff easily. Uh, so now that you have your logs, so there's a techniques that you use to process the those logs. So the other, uh, the first technique that we use mostly will be searching, because we know we got your, our artifacts from our simulation. Simulation, you can search for a specific artifact on the logs. So if you, if, if there was a file called blah 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 the dog. You can take the proxy log and search for that file. Right? So that's searching, that's an easy way to do it. Or you can do the counting. 
Um, basically, this is the country. So you can you can search for a spe specific, um, let's say, user agent three, and if you find um, the one with the least occurrence, so basically the one that is odd or that is unique, then you can focus on that one and see why is that user agent unique. Or, or, or. Grouping, you can take um, groups of steps, if I'm right, and and and, and map on those. Ones. So basically, those the last year, I don't really use that much. There's a link for the for a reference link if you wanna read, read through on this now. Um, so yeah, you search your artifact on net on the network data. So you wanna start in a network, you wanna start on a network level of stuff. So reason being, um, you start in a net, on a network session stuff. For example, here Microsoft Internet Explorer is not a user agent, user user agent. So you wanna start on a broad network, then you find some host. Right? So you search a specific um, artifact. Then you find some host. So when you find some suspicious, suspicious, suspicious host, then you, you can go to those, but those specific hosts and start doing start hunting on them. Essentially, doing incident response on them. See if they are compromised or not. That's how you analyze your, yourself. And so once you done that, if you, if you feel like um, there is some suspicious activity. It's the right time to call the forensics guys and say, hey guys, there's something wrong here. Please have a, have a look at it and execute your incident response plan. Also, we need, we do, we need to do tracking of our hunt. So um, you need to have the results. You need to, <coughs> each and every hunt, you need to say, like, oh, I didn't find anything. It's still good if you didn't find anything. It, it proves that there's probably nothing going on in your network. Which is like, also, you can have something malicious or something non-malicious. So maybe somebody violated a policy, and then you can say, cool, I found something that's not malicious. Then that will be sent to HR. But if something's malicious, we're going to have a case number on that. All right, so now um, we confirm if we're under attack or not using hunting. So we basically now have an idea how we're going. So we know we used this technique. We know we can detect this technique. And we know that we are not under attack by that attack technique. And if we were under attack, we hopefully remove the, the threat in our environment. Um, now we need to measure our effectiveness. So we all know, as I said, um, our bosses or our, our managers need, need to measure, measure to measure stuff. So the guy, Roberto, Rod, Roberto Rodriguez, created this spreadsheet and shows you how to measure yourself over, over time. So you can, Take this on a quarterly basis and show your boss that hey, this is how we're doing the hunts and stuff. This is where we need to focus on and stuff like that. So you can go. There's a very good um, um, top uh, a link blog post about this stuff here. Yeah. So key takeaways here: um, as an attacker, you get to play part in defense, which is cool. You get to find bad guys and pen test stuff on the network. You get to learn stuff like. Forensics, network monitoring, you get to write rules. You get to do cool hacks that actually makes a difference in the organization. So you get to see the measure, that, that measure of eff effectiveness. You get to see that you're actually helping the company to move forward. Instead of saying, hey, I hack you, blah, 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 this is, this is a report, or this is blah, you get to say, hey, cool, look, I hacked and I made the company better. Good, maybe you, get a, you, get, you can get a bonus too. <laughs> And you get to teach and learn from the blue team too. So the idea is that you, you as an attacker or as a red team, you need to be able to to talk or to have that good relationship with your defenders guys. You, have, you need to like, work together and improve that. <coughs> um, I talked about this talk. So there's, this is the, the, the last month they did another talk. The same talk essentially just updated and more cool and awesome from the same Chris Gates and Chris Everson. Um, so we've been talking manual stuff. Um, now people are jumping off. So essentially, this is becoming the hot, the new hotness. So people are using tools. So you can use Caldera, which is created by Mitre, the same people we talked about later earlier on. They released actually they released a tool yesterday, but the talk will be this weekend. I mean. So there's also dumpster fire for threat simulations. There's Squirrel VM. If you want to, if you do threat hunting, they have a VM that you can download. Well, I guess you, yeah, they can download and do that hunting. <coughs> just automate stuff, just make things easier for you. 
There's CCF VM for incident triage. So if you do that host hunting stuff, you want to use this VM to collect that, um, that logs, the artifacts from the, from, the, from the host machine, which is very cool. So we talked about Bore IDS if you want to do your network monitoring, Sysmon for system monitoring. Help is your free um, visual, visualization um, tool, Elastic Log Stashing, the yeah. yeah. So you want to use that too. And this awesome guy, Chris Gates, Chris Gates is also releasing um, some, auto, some auto, uh, simulation tools. Um, credits, reference, thank you. So these guys, you probably want to follow them if you want to follow do this stuff. Um, they're pretty awesome, and I've learned a lot from them. I'm sending you a from there. And there's some resources and training. Chris Sanders is also awesome guy. He's doing training, he's giving training on a, on a kind of monthly or quarterly stuff. So that's pretty cool. Special mm -hmm. thanks to these guys. Uh, Willem Smith is my colleague. Pretty awesome guys. Kevin. This is Calvin, my boss. He's also a really cool guy. Yeah, it's good. And George, my. So these guys are awesome. Like, people are kind of admire and very, like, they're, so they're, the common thing they have with them is that they're very humble people. So that's pretty awesome. Um, this is the code that I like. I use it both in offense, defense, and my personal life. Do whatever you want, trust your guts, your human feelings. You have very limited knowledge, this is best of all. That's, that's deep. <laughs> Questions? Well, 